driving. In 40 years that you've been doing this or whatever, you've never wondered or asked that question to the... Uh, well, uh, the thing is, when you ask questions, you have to be skeptical of whatever you get. It's bad science to believe what somebody tells you. So, yes, I have interacted with things that I would say were from other planets within this physical reality. Okay. But, is that, was that the case? Just my interpretation? Did I just get that information from the larger conscious system because that's what it wanted to tell me? How do I know? Skeptical. I'm a scientist. I don't do things, you know, I don't come to conclusions or beliefs because I think it's interesting or because somebody tells me. I gotta have facts. I gotta have data. So I don't have any data that says it has to be one way or another. And I can go out and ask the question and I can get an answer, but now I have to either believe it or not believe it. And I remain skeptical till I get more in. in hmm? Yeah, that's what he's talking about, extraterrestrial stuff, yeah. So it's possible. Yes, I've kind of asked the question, and yes, I've kind of gotten answers now and then. I've interacted with things that seemed like they were from other planets out of this system, because they also can travel around in the non-physical as well, you see. But it's just my nature as a scientist to stay skeptical about that. So I wouldn't say that just because I got information and I ran into some, some aliens or non-terrestrials from other parts of our physical universe, that that makes that a, a fact. It doesn't. It's a piece of information. Yeah, but you're not the only person who's gotten extraterrestrial yeah. information. Yeah, I'm not the only person who could have gotten misinformation either. And the other point is that I don't worry about it much or think about it much because it doesn't make any difference. It's totally irrelevant. It falls into that category called inquiring egos want to know. It's maybe fun or interesting, but it's of no practical value. What, what, makes you, what would make you grow up better or become love more readily, whether there were extraterrestrials or not, you see? Interaction with another species would increase our, our choice points. Exactly. That's the one thing that you can look at that says it might be valuable because, all right, the bacteria got to the jellyfish, got to the fish, got to the reptiles, right? Got to us eventually, and we get together as all one happy family. What's the next step? Could be that us and all the other planets in our galaxy need to get together and be one happy family because that would be even a higher level of order. And it could be that then all the galaxies have to get together and become one happy family of cooperative caring and that would even be a higher level of order, right? Less and less entropy as we go up, more and more order. And then it could be that all the super galaxies, you know, have to come together from all the galaxies to do this. So we can run this, this up like that and say that we're just in the first beginning stages of it and we've got all these other coming togethers that we have to do yet. We have to learn to cooperate among ourselves. Then we have to learn to be cooperative with other, you know, planets or entities, other galaxies, other super galaxies, and the thing might just go on and on, but the larger kinds of system would have to have an awful lot of seats available for that, and it is a real system. It does have limitations. It's not infinite, so maybe, maybe not, but I like that too. That's kind of a nice way of you know, of putting it all together, but that's a possibility as well. So we have these possibilities. I can see there's a good argument that we're one among many, and also a pretty good argument that we might not be. Could go either way, and... What is your instinct? Well, you know, I... No, I don't. You know, I'm not that interested in it because it's not it's an interesting conjecture, but it's not anything that makes any difference to my growth. It's irrelevant. And if you spend a lot of time chasing down irrelevant things, it lowers your overall credibility because it shows you that you're, it, it, you're not focused on what's important. So 
And I don't mean credibility among people here, I mean credibility in the larger consciousness system. Credibility in the, in the places where you have to work. So I don't bother with it. And it's not really important. Doesn't matter. Could be any of those ways. And when we get there, we'll know. And before we get there, doesn't matter. So I don't find it really a very interesting thing to do. But I can see all the possibilities. And I, I agree with you that, uh, you know, let that, let that keep going. Who knows? But the system's limited. It doesn't have infinite number of bits. And it's got to use them in the most effective way possible. And at first I thought, well, it wouldn't want to do a whole universe just for this one little tiny thing. You know, this tiny speck in this universe and create this whole universe just for that speck doesn't make any sense. And then, of course, I realized that that speck is the only thing that has to have any definition. Everything else is just a potential light in the sky. Not even light in the sky. We probably can't see but one thousandth, the one thousandth of a percent of the suns that are out there when we look up at the sky. Even with telescopes, we can't see that much. We're just such a tiny speck, so it's just, just a dot of light in the sky, or not. Only when you look at it does it have to be rendered, so it's almost no effort at all to produce a huge universe and not use much of it. It's just a tool. And if that's the kind of tool has to do that in order to evolve, because there's no way to write a rule set that just evolves one little planet and one sun, that just doesn't come out of any kind of rule set, you have to kind of let this whole thing go, and if you want a stable rule set, you need this kind of whole picture, but you're only going to use this part. Not such a big deal, because that picture really isn't all that big. It's just this part and a couple of little lights in the sky, which only take a bit apiece. It's really not a whole big universe, maybe. It's maybe just us and, you know, wallpaper, window dressing, something for the telescopes to see. But as you said, it took the, the larger consciousness system a while to figure out how to create a rule set that would I'm sure it did. what we've got here. Yeah, it so would be. It did that work, so why not just take the little uh, uh, cell that they may have planted here mm -hmm. and maybe modify it a little bit Planet. through genetic engineering. And yeah. else. The only reason not to is that you don't need it. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's not essential. You just don't need it. It'd be, it'd be excess. It'd be, huh? All right, gives you two petri dishes and you only need one. So that would be the only reason that, that there's not that many individuated units of consciousness that you need that many planets with people in the evolution. If you don't, then there's no point. You just make what you need, and the rest of it is, is window dressing. So it's possible. So. Don't know about that one. You see, that's, that's uh, yeah, you can get information, but you can't believe it, because you can't believe anything you hear. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I would say that to you about me as well. You can't believe what I tell you. You need to think for yourself. I don't want anybody to believe me because that doesn't l take you anywhere important. If all you do is believe me, then what have you got? Nothing but a belief. You're stuck. What if information comes along that tells you contrary? You're stuck. Can't believe me. Can't believe anything. But what you can do is have open-minded skepticism. And you deal with the probabilities and say, well, this is the best thing I've heard yet, it explains a lot of things, so I'll give that, and it explains physics, you know, it does quantum mechanics, does relativity, does all this hard science stuff, so I'll give it a 0.7 or 0.8, or if you're really skeptical, 0.5, you know, I'll give it something, and just keep it like that until you get more information. If you don't get any more information, let it stay like that, and it doesn't matter that much because you're still going to do what you do. You're going to be making choices and trying to grow up. And, you know, what you believe or disbelieve is kind of irrelevant to that. You get choices, and you make them, and you grow up, you evolve or you de-evolve. So it doesn't matter so much. One of the key things you have to learn is to live gracefully with uncertainty. There's just a lot of things we don't know, and that has to be 
okay. Because if that rubs at you, that you don't know and you have to find out and you've got this drive to know and find out, that's not helpful. You see, that's getting in your way. That's, that's extra effort spinning your wheels and it's not going anywhere. It's better just to realize there's some things we just don't know. And we're not going to know them. And some of them are impossible to know, which means it's illogical. We can't know them because you can't watch yourself being born. There's some things that you just won't know. And it's life. You know? Like live with it, right? That's the, that's the idea. And you have to do that with these entities you're going to talk to. There's a lot about them you don't know. You don't know who they are. You don't know why they're talking to you. You don't know what they're telling you, whether it's true or, or not. You don't know anything about them. But you're open and you go with it. You're uncertain. You're skeptical. And in months and months and lots of conversation, you'll figure that out. That skepticism will change. You'll either go down or it'll go up. Your probability of the value that you get. What's the probability I'm going to get some good value out of this? Well, it starts kind of, I don't know, 50-50 maybe. Then after 10 or, 10 or so interactions, maybe it's gone down to 20-80. You're just not getting anywhere. And then another 10 interactions, maybe it's 10-90, and then it's time to let it go. Or maybe it goes the other way, and it seems valuable to you. Well, then the probability of it being useful starts going up. But you should almost have nothing that ever gets to a 1 or a 0, because both of those leave no uncertainty. And things that are uncertain are hard to come by. There's not much that doesn't have any uncertainty around it. So to just learn to live gracefully with uncertainty is a lot we never know. But we'll deal with it anyway, and we'll be open. And we won't think of it negative before we have good reason to do that.